People who live at tourist destinations. What is it you wish tourists would stop doing when visiting? Don't freaking carve your name on stuff. The amount of people who need to carve their names onto historical buildings and statues are just crazy. Don't be an ass. You are ruining the place. And respect people's properties. Yeah. It's a cute street with cute houses and charming gardens. But that does not give you the right to enter people's private properties, to peep in their windows, walk in their gardens, and try to open their doors. A colleague is selling his house because he's tired of people peeping in their windows and trying to open their door to have a look inside. He got yelled at for being inappropriate while he was sunbathing in his own garden by a tourist who let themselves in the gate and walked around the house to have a look at his garden. WTF. Entering his property. Worst is that the lady who cussed him out for being inappropriate was American. You'd think someone from the states would know better than to walk into someone's garden. Or she knew we don't carry guns in Norway. Why is it called tourist season if you can't shoot them? Going on the black rocks and being swept out to the Atlantic Ocean. Risking the lives of first responders and locals many of whom are already traumatized from Swiss air. And there are so so, so many signs to stay off the black rocks. I'm starting to think that the people who get rescued should have to foot the bill. So, so many of them that, as soon as I read it, I knew they were talking about Peggy's Cove. Stopping their cars in the middle of the road to take in a view. WTF. They do this for wildlife, where I live as well. I've seen idiots chasing bears with cubs into the forest to take pictures with their phones. A friend of mine lost a relative because a Turin in a bear jam didn't look before pulling back into traffic on the road because he was so focused on the bear and didn't see the cyclists. Hit one of them and broke the cyclist's neck. Sort of related. But we get a lot of folk moving here who are used to city living. They visit once, then buy a three quarters million dollar home and decide they're nature people now. It's really been ratcheting up lately. The sheer number of complaints about wildlife are astounding. My favorite and most emblematic example was that someone wrote a next door post about how the park rangers wouldn't come out when she called about a bear that was on the trail in the woods of a national forest. She was indignant and asked if the sheriff department would do anything. Lady, that bear's family has been here many more generations than you or me. It's their trail. Yep. I talk to people worried about bears in their yard. I'm like, well if you put your trash cans in your garage instead of the driveway, they'll unlikely to break in for that. And maybe stop feeding bird seed to the deer and turkeys, because you're just begging for a bear to come for the bird seed or a lion to come in for the deer. The shocked looks on their faces. Lolita, to be more clear, lion is short for mountain lion. Sorry for the confusion. What are the noises I hear at night? Coyotes why are there coyotes? Because your b-day is now located where their den used to be. Cheryl. Then Cheryl posts and wonders why her outdoor cat hasn't come home in days. Deface world heritage sites for souvenirs or internet clout. For example, the Colosseum in Rome has graffiti carved into its walls by asshole tourists and Stonehenge is closed off to the public because assholes were chipping pieces off for souvenirs. It is worth noting, at one point the caretakers at Stonehenge handed out rock hammers to tourists for the specific purpose of chipping off bits to take as souvenirs. That was before the modern idea of museum as conservation of history. Jesus Christ. That's like doctor smoking in the hospital. When I was a teenager I worked in a restaurant that was a local staple and had been run by the same family for a few generations. There's a photo hanging up of the kitchen in the 1950s and three men are standing shoulder to shoulder smoking cigarettes and chopping fish heads. Beautiful. Lol. Driving drunk. I live in Sonoma County, California. Make sure you've got a sober driver FFS. The roads around here are never more dangerous than winery tasting room closing time on a sunny weekend. Driving Sonoma roads drunk is basically assisted suicide. Assistance coming from the massive curves and double backs. Plus there's always someone on a bicycle around the curve. Riding a bike on wine country roads. Oh hell no. I see this while driving along the Rhine in southern Germany where it's hilly and there's vineyards and winneries all over the place. Scary as hell when sober driving around there. No. I don't drive drunk. Come on. Stop feeding the damn seagulls. 
I worked at Disney World for a few years and the squirrels there are vicious. People think it's fun to feed them, so they are completely fearless. They'll hop right into a stroller and grab food from a child edit. Absolutely loved going on to Reddit a few hours later and seeing a bunch of aggressive squirrel stories. I've legit had a squirrel at a theme park come up to me and hold out its hand, poor, expecting food. At least it was polite about it. When a former roommate and I were in Washington side seeing the National Mall, we passed this tree over by the Vietnam Memorial that was full of chittering squirrels. One that was almost as wide as it was tall came waddling over to us looking for a handout. It was both the least people shy and the fattest squirrel I've seen in my life. To qualities that I'm sure are related. I was eating peanut butter M&Ms on the mall once, and a squirrel grabbed my hand and bit my finger thinking it was a snack. Luckily the squirrels on DC don't appear to have rabies. That day I also met Corey Lewandowski and a few other Trump acolytes. By accident, it was a weird day. I paid a lot to be here change, blank, or I'll leave a horrible review driving like a d-head. Leaving garbage anywhere but a rubbish bin. Stopping in the middle of the road to let out your family of 12 instead of pulling into the parking lot. I have a lot of stories. I live in Hawaii and work only with tourists. Best yet. My company was asked to contact the cruise ship company to have them move the ship because it disrupted the sunset. Please move that ship it's making my sunset pictures but what kind of person genuinely thinks that's not insane? I'm surprised they didn't ask them to move the sun. Oh could you bring it back up a few degrees? I just missed my codic moment. Better yet lower the horizon a bit thanks. In my hometown. It somehow became a thing that tourists would rent mopeds. So when you are trying to get to work, you often get stuck behind a flock of tourists on mopeds. Riding at 20 miles per hour in formation, so you cannot pass them. We are infested with gawking tourist smoke gangs. If they want to rent mopeds, at least go the speed limit and ride in a manner that allows others to pass you. My town has this issue, except with golf carts. Dear tourists, if you want to go slow and see slash smell the sea with the family, get a good radical and enjoy the views from the big ass. Uninterrupted sidewalk, stop blocking traffic for everyone else, just because one of our major roads happens to run along the shore. Thank you, D. Leave the wildlife alone. And this doesn't just extend to tourists, but to people that live here too. 45 plus coyote attacks last year in no small part because of people giving them food leading to a cull. Bears getting habituated to people because they're being given food leading to them getting killed. Otters and sea lions getting fed. They're not cute cuddly things. They're wild animals and will kill you and then. Because they're doing what they do. They'll get killed because they're dangerous to humans. When in reality they're only dangerous to ignorant rubes with no respect for nature. As someone who lives in Arizona, it blows my mind that I actually have to regularly explain to other citizens of this state that if you hear rattling under the log slash branch you're about to step over while hiking, walk away. Instead, they apparently hear pick it up or try to step over it and get a good, close look at the hospital visit you're about to have. Also, that coyote you see, he's likely not alone. Don't fucking approach it. See? Your snakes aren't deadly enough. In Australia we don't f with the venomous wildlife, because if you leave it alone it'll leave you alone, but if you bother it, it may in fact f fine kill you. Inland tapons are occlusive. They don't want to mess with you. They also have venom potent enough to kill you within about 45 minutes. One bite could actually kill quite a few people if the venom was spread out, and they can bite multiple times in one attack. But they don't actually give a rest about you. You're too big to eat. Just leave them the f alone. This is the way of Australian wildlife. These comments make me feel like a good tourist. Seriously. It all basically boils down to don't trash the place and be mindful of your surroundings. Really. People should be acting like this every day. Whether vacationing or at home. I worked in hotels and there was a term we used. Vacation brain. For some reason even the most intelligent people become extremely dumb when out of their element. I'm positive these people have seen and operated a credit card machine before. Yet when they come to check in it's like a futuristic device that they have never seen before. It's like common sense went on a vacation too. 
I think most people are tired by the time they get to the hotel. I have been on road trips and I know a few times by the time I got to the hotel. I was drained from the road and probably seemed pretty stupid when getting my room lol. But there are definitely people out there with vacation brain too. Clean up your fucking trash. I used to live in a spring break destination which was a small surf town. After spring break, people would be cleaning up pounds upon pounds of beer cans, broken bottles, needles, used condoms. Fucking revolting. In Bali, 1997 to 99 at least, at the end of the days there would be mounds of garbage piled next to slash over the garbage cans. In the middle of the night workers would come, put it all in plastic bags, dig a big hole in the beach and throw it all down in the hole and cover it up. Night. After night. After night. You'd see it slowly working its way back up out of the sand over time. Heartbreaking. I was in Bali December 2019. The rubbish was out of control. Every single morning massive trucks with scoop buckets on the front went up and down the beach scooping up huge pile of rubbish. Both from what was washed up from the ocean and the rubbish left behind on the beach. It was disgusting. Between the horrendous amounts of rubbish and the dengue fever we all got from the vicious mozzies. I can't see myself ever going back. And we used to go at least once a year as kids. Very different place now. God damn it, I missed it, before it was wrecked. Always wanted to go to Bali, but there are just too many PPL now for a paradise like that to exist anymore. Spain. We get a shit fuck ton of tourists. Very well behaved for the most part where I am. So. Thanks for doing it right. Tourists. The worst is littering on the beach. Which is thankfully pretty rare. I occasionally see someone put a cigarette, but in the sand. A lot are taken away when they leave, but the sand has a way of hiding stuff. So a lot remain. I'll give you tourists one tip. Night swimming. If you put your keys, glasses, etc. down in the sand, they're gone. Between the sand and the dark, you'll never see them again. Spain here as well. Up in a mountain town. For me it's the music slash noise, especially on a hiking trail or in a beautiful secluded scenic area in the woods. I do not want to listen to private conversations on speakerphone and music from a loud boombox. I witnessed this near Montserrat. Like Jesus Christ can you not just enjoy the sounds of nature for half a fucking minute? Stop walking out into the middle of an active downtown street to take group pictures of yourselves in shilling outfits on the spot where Kennedy was shot. That's a thing. I've seen it several times. There must be some chilling center in the West End or something. They're always there. The spaghetti warehouse was their main hangout before it closed. I didn't know that there was a restaurant called Spaghetti Warehouse. So I read your comment. And I'm imagining a literal warehouse of spaghetti lol. Not to be confused with the old spaghetti factory. Clean up your trash cans. Throw away fishing line and chum boxes instead of throwing in ocean. Also jet skis stop burning my fishing flats. Amsterdam. Walking around like they are at Legoland. Blindly stepping into traffic. Oblivious to the fact that people actually live here. We use the bike to get to work. To get groceries. We are not just aimlessly cycling around for the fun of it. I live in the Netherlands. So I'm used to bikes. Amsterdam however truly is on another level. The residents ride their bikes. Like they are ready to kill anyone standing in their way. I had new people living in Amsterdam openly telling me they bike faster when they see someone on the bike lane to hit them harder. I was like damn. I was born here, but I was taught to give them some space. Terry Pratchett once said his dream vacation would be immunity from prosecution. And taking a baseball bat to Amsterdam in cycle lanes. Stopping dead in a crowd in the middle of the sidewalk. Related, walking seven abreast and agonizingly slowly when people have fucking places to be. This. Four people would walk slow as shit. Shoulder to shoulder in a place like New York City. Stop being a belligerent asshole just because you're in New Orleans. It's still not an excuse to get blackout drunk, litter, and make hell for food service workers. Visited there for the first time recently. I'm in my late 30s. And figured I'd see lots of drunk younger people. Was surprised by how many 40 plus year olds were smashed. Few passed out in corners while their friends tried to wake them up. Was really not what I expected. But the city itself is pretty cool. 
people always want to visit during Mardi Gras. And yes, that is a vibe and an experience. But I don't think Louisiana is ever prettier than when the azaleas are in bloom. Usually warm but not blazing. And riotous color everywhere. For your sake. Stop trying to pet the buffalo. Or don't. Some of us are entertained by the videos of you flying through the air. I worry about bears or bear cubs. Too much human contact can put them in real danger. But buffalo. They will be just fine if they end up having an interaction with a tyrant. Getting shit faced slash coked up and getting up in people's business or pick fights with the doorman or bus staff or talk about weed and getting stoned the entire time or ask me where the red light district is while standing in the red light district or renting a bike when the last time you rode one was in preschool. I really feel you on this one. Amsterdam was naturally my first stop on a tour of the Netherlands and I remember walking around thinking I could live there and then night came and I quickly changed that mindset and it was only the tourists. The locals were amazing. There are areas for tourists and areas for locals. Locals hardly go near the tourist areas. Most tourists don't come out of their areas. They don't even know they have areas. You can perfectly live here and it's quite easy to avoid tourists. But you can't learn how in two weeks. Local is still much bigger than touristic only. But it's not something you can google. But if you wanted to PM. So I could ask some questions I'd love to hear about it. As a very active traveler the Netherlands is one of the few places. That has prompted the I want to live here in me. I actually looked for work in Eindhoven at one point.